So in this video, I wanted to rehash what happened in the review of this video right here. So I did a review on the Air Jordan 1 High OG 85s uh, in the Georgetown colorway. And in that video, I mentioned the leather quality was not very good on these shoes. And I got flamed for it in the comment section, which honestly is a little bit surprising because it's a Jordan retro, like how good of quality of leather were you guys thinking was supposed to be on the shoe? But everybody was saying that the leather quality was like way better than on a regular pair of Air Jordans. And I'm not talking about the tumbled leather for those people that are confused by my statements, which rightfully so, maybe I led you guys down the wrong path. Uh, but the leather quality of this is the uh, topic of the day and I wanted to go ahead and jump in and kind of uh, rehash some of the conversation. So to start off, I'm not a leather expert by any means and if anybody is a leather expert that's watching this video or a Jordan brand employee that knows about the leather quality of this, please drop me a line and let me know uh, how right and wrong I am or how right and wrong people are in the comment section of my previous video because I just, I personally don't see how you guys are seeing the leather quality on this is being good. Maybe I'm looking at it wrong and we just need to stick to the, the scale of like Air Jordan sneakers in general, like good quality or bad quality. Like where does this fall in the middle? I mean, literally to me it falls in the middle and it's not because this isn't soft and buttery and it's not because the leather is stiff as a board. I saw a lot of arguments and I heard a lot of people tell me, well, it's stiff leather, it's supposed to be stiff and um, that doesn't mean that the quality is not good. But I would agree and disagree. I mean, yes, you're right. The leather quality and the stiffness doesn't dictate whether or not the leather used to create this product is good. However, the thickness and the cut of the leather should dictate how the quality of this product is. And it's still not very thick. And in my opinion, it doesn't look very good. Obviously, there's a big difference uh, between like the uh, the bread retros here versus the uh, 85s. The biggest difference is because this is soft and buttery and it's a little bit tumbled. And I saw... Seth Fowler's video and Nightwing's video after the fact because you guys pointed me to them and I, you know, I follow those guys anyway. I just didn't see the review on the particular products. And both of them did say that the leather quality on here was better than on a regular pair. But I still think that that's a subjective answer because at the end of the day, I look at both of these and this is just a, a regular pair of, of Air Jordan 1 highs. The leather quality on the yellow part looks one-to-one -to, -one to the leather quality on here. Specifically, I'm looking at the cut of the leather. It just, it looks the same to me. And if they created this one differently and I'm completely blind, leave a comment and let me know. But I don't think I'm that far off by saying this still isn't very good leather. Other comments uh, I saw in my comment section said that this is using top grain leather to create this. I just, I don't see how this is using top grain leather either. Where I will say that I'm completely wrong is by even caring about this subject. Because at the end of the day, this is where things get like a little bit more interesting and a little bit more confusing is like, this is supposed to be like an artifact, like reinvented, right? Like this is supposed to be a 1985 version of a pair of Air Jordans that is almost 40 years old. And back in the day, this was the shape of the shoe. Now I didn't have any OGs back then. I was little and I haven't had a, like an original pair ever in my life. So the main message that I missed the first video versus now is that the differences that they made on this shoe are very, very subtle and small, but they're quite impactful, especially for people that are like diehard consumers of the product. I'm not a diehard consumer of OG, but like, M. Joe 23 Dan probably loves every single detail about what this shoe offers and rightfully so because he's like super into like all of the OG stuff and, and the original like makings of what Jordan brand created. For the shape of the shoe, I get that it's probably very important to some people. In my review, the only major difference that I could see between the two by looking them side by side is the Wings logo is obviously different. Uh, the other differences that are not as major, but definitely something that I called out in the text overlay at least, was the shape. The shape is definitely different. Obviously this is straight up and down on the 85s and this one is much more curved on this pair. And um, again, shout out to Chris and Seth because I saw their videos after the fact. The width of the midsole is thinner on the 85s versus the regular pair, so it is a little bit more narrow. And then also the toe box is the dead giveaway. The, the toe box shape is a lot fatter and, and whatnot than uh, the retro pairs. Even more subtle is the shape of the panel right here that comes up through where the wings is. That is a little bit different as well. And then the midsole shape is more curved on the 85s versus the flat midsole shape on the regular highs. And the other difference is the outsoles of the shoe. They do look fundamentally the same, but the stars are a little bit different on uh, the 85s, which means they probably use a different mold for these ones, which can be why the price of the shoe is so much more elevated at $200. Another thing that I, sh I neglected to show you guys that is definitely an important part is the paper hang tag of the uh, Jumpman on here. This is something that came on the OG pairs and it is a really cool piece of the product that they included with product details and whatnot. Uh, I do like the fact that they have that. Also the insole thickness is actually a little bit bigger. It's a different insole on the 85s. So in summary, I would say I was wrong. I should have given this shoe some more TLC and some more proper like respect on a 
its name for the 85 uh, rendition and the version that we had. Uh, from Jordan Brand, that being said, I still don't think the leather quality is that amazing. I just don't see the amazing quality that you guys are seeing on this one. Uh, stiffer leather means you need to break it in longer from what a lot of people said, which is truer to the original form of the 85, which again, I think that people appreciate that side of it. Uh, unfortunately for me, I got the wrong size of the shoe. Uh, Kicks World sent these over and they sent me over a size 10 instead of a 9.5, so I couldn't really properly wear them. So that's kind of a bummer, but hopefully I actually hit on a pair in my size. I'll give them a full wear and actually see if it's that much better or not. But what do you guys think about the Georgetown Air Jordan 1s? Is it something you guys are going to be getting or not? Uh, do you guys appreciate what they did with the 85 renditions or the versions of the Air Jordan 1? At the end of the day, it's an Air Jordan retro. I shouldn't really care about the leather quality. For the most part, we know what we're getting, but it was really weird to me seeing all the people saying like I was wrong, like it's really good quality. And then I look at it and go, eh, really? Like, I don't see the, the good quality that everybody else is seeing, apparently. But uh, maybe I just need to get a different pair in hand. Any which way, leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. But anyway, thank you guys for stopping by and watching again. Hopefully you have a good one. And we'll see you hopefully back for some more videos. All right, peace, guys.